Now this is actually starting to look an awful lot like a resonant mode uh, controller. It just makes sense. Well, it's a basic generic uh, resonant mode topology, um, but I think we're going to see that line up here. We've got ourselves our four diodes down here. We've got ourselves four MOSFETs under here, down on their own heatsink down there. There are four 60R360s. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a resonant mode power supply and that makes sense. Now I won't go into a full tutorial on resonant mode uh, power supplies well because that'd be an hour video in its own right. Um, and it can be quite a complicated uh, subject if you, you know, go into the uh, deep dive into the maths of it. So what we had up here is our four MOSFETs. And I'll show you the data sheet for those in a minute because that's the tell. And uh, under here we have our four diodes as well. And we've got some transformers here and a big ass inductor like this. So that with the four MOSFETs and the four diodes, that is a classic configuration for what's called a uh, full bridge resonant converter. So we'll show you the topology in a minute, but the data sheet for these will pretty much prove it. And those MOSFETs that we saw under there, surprise, surprise, look at this. 600 volts cool MOS, a uh, little CFD7 for those playing long at home, SJ MOSFET. Infineon's answer to resonant high power topologies. Bingo, we got it. Um, the Infineon's latest uh, high voltage super junction MOSFET technology with integrated fast body diode complementing the cool MOS 7 is the ideal choice for resonant topologies in high power switch mode power supply applications such as server, telecom, EV, charging stations and all that sort of stuff. And you can go into the technical details about why this is the best in the business and stuff like that. Anyway, yeah, they compare it to all their competitors, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, yeah, that, that's the jobby that's used in here. So so yeah, this is a resonant mode controller and it makes complete sense because they're trying to put an 800 watt uh, power supply into a two rack unit case here. So the efficiency is very important. You can't piss away any power in your heat sinks because then thermally you've just got to get all that out and the airflow and everything else. It's just, it's horrible. So you want to make this thing as efficient as possible. And that's what resonant mode converters do. They are higher uh, quiescent current uh, supplies, but when they're actually switching at full power, they are actually more efficient. And I'll explain why. I found this application note from Infineon. I'll link it in down below. Resonant LLC uh, converter operation and design. And it has a good uh, generic application um, circuit here. And I believe this is pretty much what we're saying here. This is why it's a full bridge. Now you can actually get a half bridge a resonant uh, converter as well. And they're very common, which of course will only have, if you're aware of your full bridge, you know, your H bridge, uh, you can get a half bridge would only have the two MOSFETs and would only have the two output uh, diodes. But in this case, we do have physically four MOSFETs and four uh, diodes on those heat sinks. So this is what's going on here. Now, how a a resonant mode uh, controller works is that it's basically a switch in series with an LC tank circuit, a capacitor and inductor tank circuit here. And that forms, that's where the name comes from, hence resonance, it's resonant mode. So it actually switches on the resonant point of the L and the C here. And then you've got a transformer, which then couples that. And that's where they're getting their isolation from, of course, uh, for each uh, channel. And then the output is just a regular full wave uh, bridge like this. But um, it's the switching in here at the resonant point of the LC tank circuit that reduces the switching losses in the converter and hence the heat dissipated uh, during switching. And there you go, you can go into the uh, maths of it, for those, and it gets more complicated than that uh, too. That's the equivalent resonance circuit uh, and the quality factor and blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. And then you can get into the regions and things like that, and we won't go into that because it gets quite complex. So the thing with a regular switch mode uh, topology that you're used to with your regular switching uh, transistor is that uh, it's switching it basically like digitally, like high, low, high, low, high, low, like that. And the switching losses can be quite high, particularly the higher frequency you go, because you, you want to make it more efficient. So you go to a higher frequency, but at the higher frequency, you get greater switching losses with that sort of thing. Whereas with a resonant mode uh, converter like this, it actually changes the wave shape, the switching wave shape, so that there's effectively less losses. I'll, I'll try a Dave cat it. 
Oh, and you can see the various uh, switching waveforms. So if you want to go through step by step how it works, this uh, application node is uh, pretty good. And it just goes through and it explains each cycle, et cetera, et cetera. And it shows some of the waveforms too. But uh, let me try and explain something here. Please excuse the crudity of this model. I certainly didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. Now, <laughs> this one on the left here is, uh, let's say the switching, I'm simplifying this. Let's say this is the switching waveform for your typical uh, converter, which is switching hard like this, okay? Now, this area in here and under here, these are, you can consider those the uh, power dissipation, the losses in your switching elements, which uh, is heat that you have to get rid of, right? So that's the efficiency of your converter. But a resonant mode controller is going to change instead of like a hard switching light. I've exaggerated the slew on that, by the way. Anyway, the resonant mode uh, controller actually changes the wave shape. So it's like this and i it's your switching loss is going to be smaller but basically what that does is it reduces the amount of switching losses in here so it's smaller and you can get a dramatic uh difference in the switching losses in your converter uh from a just a regular switch mode topology whichever one you want to choose which is hard switching versus a resonant mode switching which is using the l and c to change the wave shape there, and you just get basically area under the curve, your losses um, is less. But as I said, it's not some magic bullet, that's why not everyone uses switching mode uh, converters, because the losses will actually, in uh, low power state, like in effect, uh, quiescent power dissipation is gonna be uh, potentially higher for resonant mode uh, stuff. So, you know, but for large output power supplies like this in a small amount of space where you wanna make them as efficient as possible, Resonant mode's a decent choice. And by the way, in this particular case, if you are actually using only uh, half of the sinusoid, uh, the resonant uh, LC sinusoid like this, then it's what's called a quasi-resonant uh, converter, and you might have heard that. And the other thing with resonant mode controllers, if you haven't already gathered, is that they're more expensive and more difficult to actually design and tweak and get right. So hence, they're only used in like really top shelf uh, power supplies like this one. And you know, like you can just have a look at like all of the <laughs> all of the analysis required, the equivalent rev uh, resonant uh, circuit, and this is just a first harmonic analysis, I believe, of it. Um, but that's you know pretty much all you need to. Uh, do but you can go further down the rabbit hole as I uh, said but yeah actually uh, getting just the tank circuit right and the and the ratio the turns ratio of uh, the transformer and the various inductors and various modes and things like that and the parasitics of the transformer and and in some cases the uh, transformer over here is is gonna not be as uh, like uh, as well determined as our uh, specific inductors over in the LC tank part and things like this and matching all this and getting it all right and figuring out all this sort of stuff. Look, I mean, this is just right, <laughs> right? Yeah, we're getting really serious in modes of operation and getting it all right. So it's pretty much vastly more difficult to actually design and engineer one of these than it is for your more traditional uh, PWM, uh, you know, boost bucky sepic uh, type converter that you're used to uh, doing so yeah you really only see these on like really pretty much top shelf uh power supplies they've even got a flow chart design step here Q, what are the q max values find fx minimum is k max require uh, required gain all this sort of stuff and uh, like choose your resonant component values um it's just <laughs> it's, it's seriously like selecting the m value for example so you've got to understand the formula up here and figure out what your M value is doing. Of course, you can just like cludge it all and kind of sort of make it work, but that kind of defeats the point. So here, you've got to know the ratio of the total primary inductance to the resonant inductance. So you've effectively got your resonance inductance here and then your primary inductance, your transformer, you've got to match all that and all the parasitics involved in that. And <laughs> It gets complicated. Any resonant mode, switch mode uh, design experts, let us know in the comments down below if this is uh, your day job designing uh, resonant mode controllers because, yeah, a lot of effort went into uh, doing this. Let's just put it that way.
So here it is, like this is for different values of M, for example, like M3, M6, for example, and how this, uh, like it flattens out the peaks here. So lower M value is gonna give you higher boost gain, narrower frequency range, more flexible regulation. But if you want higher efficiency, you gotta go for the higher M uh, values, but then you're gonna get higher magnetizing inductance. And I, oh, it's just, yeah, <laughs> no. So yeah, like knock yourself out um, on resonant mode uh, <laughs> power supply design, voltage gain verification. <laughs> Look at this. As I said, I'll link this down below. Res and then you finally, once you've done all that engineering, you calculate your resonant mode values and then bridge and rectifier selection, uh, for example. Um, this is why they use MOSFETs in here. There's basically two, uh, you really can't do this with bipolar transistors because their drive requirements are too much so really you need a very specific in this case highly optimized uh, MOSFET one that's carefully tailored for this kind of uh, specific resonant mode operation and this is what they uh, design these specific MOSFETs for. And if you want to know the difference between a full bridge and a half bridge one, how and why, here you go. Uh, the Although a half bridge requires half the primary turns for the same voltage gain and magnetic flux swing, thus half the primary winding resistance, the primary copper losses are, of course, uh, double compared to the full bridge because the squared RMS, <laughs> that pesky I squared R thing, the squared RMS current in the half bridge is four times. So it might be cheaper and simpler to design a half bridge uh, resonant mode uh, converter. And as I said, uh, they're relatively common, um, but yeah, for the best performance in like a top shelf product like this, you're going to want to implement the full bridge uh, converter, definitely. And here's where they talk about the output rectification as well. As I said, you can actually do a full uh, bridge rectifier for a common transformer like this, but then again, you've got to have like a center tapped transformer if you want to do that, whereas this one is uh, not center tap. So you're probably larger transformer, maybe there's some, you know, design, extra design losses and things like that. So you might be better off for the full bridge. So there you go. There's a summary of the full wave uh, output rectifier compared to the full bridge. And this has got like essentially nothing to do with the uh, <laughs> resonant converter side. That's over on the uh, primary side. This is just the secondary uh, side. So diode voltage rating has got to be times two, number of diodes, but you can save cost on your number of diodes. The conduction losses are divided by two, the number of uh, secondary windings, but you've got to go up by two, as I said, uh, the resistance per winding goes up by two, and the IMS current uh, is a square times square root of half, and transformer secondary copper losses times two, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, there's a big trade-off there. And by the way, you'll see uh, these resonant mode uh, controllers often like a half uh, bridge type actually implemented in something like a you know, backlight for uh, TV backlight uh, power supplies and, and things like that. Um, they're just trying to basically uh, get the losses down and you know, these do a pretty good job at it. So they actually give you a design example here. Once again, I'll link this down below and you can actually go through the steps of actually designing uh, a resonant mode uh, converter step by step calculating the resonant mode component values and all this sort of stuff look we need like one mic uh, for example for the capacitance we need 11 uh, mic henry's uh, for the inductance and all that sort of jazz experimental waveforms and efficiency and here's actually measured waveforms and stuff like that and you can see typical waveforms here and you can check out the efficiencies here you know 97 and a half percent it's pretty schmick and it doesn't drop a huge amount with uh, input uh, voltage variation I mean even like worst case here we're still looking at 94 percent not too shabby oh, look at that they've even got a reference design there and the schematics and the bill of materials and everything great application note thumbs up by the way i forgot to mention that these are also called a resonant llc uh converters the reason that they're called llc is because it's pretty obvious let's have a look down here there's a capacitor, that's the C, and there's essentially two inductors here because that is like the transformer primary has to be by definition part, it's an inductor too. So it's part of the uh, LLC tank circuit. You have to take that into consideration in your calculations and stuff like that. So they flip it, even though the C is first physically in the circuit, it's LLC. Anyway, so if you see that term, they're talking about resonant mode converters. And basically all it's doing is uh, taking your DC input here and it's converting that into a square wave, which then gets pulse shaped by this LC tank circuit. So instead of having nice, hard, fast uh, switching currents, you have 
nice more gentle currents or hence hard switching versus smooth switching effectively so lc circuits are just known as like smooth switches really and another advantage of resonant mode uh, converters con compared to your typical uh, pulse width modulation ones which as you know can change the pulse width and actually fre change frequency as well i'm sure i've done uh, videos on like uh, different modes of operation you know they'll go into some pulse skipping mode and then they'll go uh, they'll switch down frequencies or up frequencies depending upon the output current and things like that they'll dynamically change and they're actually when you've got like really broadly changing uh, switching frequencies like that it's really hard to filter out those sort of frequencies so in terms of your EMI your electromagnetic uh, interference and your compliance for that sort of stuff resonant modes are actually much better it's, it's in the name it resonates at one frequency so you've got a really narrow range of frequencies uh, that you have to filter out here and it's, it's just much easier to filter out to put in an EMC filter um, for your resonant mode uh, LLC controller and that especially comes into play at large large output currents and large output powers because when you're switching huge amounts of current if you're doing that over a huge variable frequency range well, you know you can really come a gut to come EMC uh, testing time so yeah resonant mode has definite advantages there so you can actually see these capacitors under here like this and they've got the same ones up under here you just can't see it at this angle so they would be our series capacitance in our topology uh, and maybe the inductor is actually this baby but the part number of these two is identical so we need an inductor plus a transformer so I maybe they're reusing one side I I'm not sure now you could you might think that this one here that's the resonant mode inductor but I don't think so because it's not these little uh piddly surface mount jobbies here um so yeah and its location is further like is looks like it's on the isolate you know it's on this isolated side of the converter so that that really doesn't make sense so that's probably just part of an output filter i'd say but yeah i'd say yeah it's coming in here uh this is our full wave bridge these are our caps <laughs> <laughs> stick with me and we've got an inductor we've got a uh then our isolation transformer uh we've got our four output uh, rectifier diodes down here and then there's as i said there's another mosfet under here so i'm not quite sure what they're doing there and then we've just got some output uh filtering so yeah i think that's how it works I'm sure the power supply aficionados will all be commenting down below about uh, what's going on here but anyway it, it looks to be some variation of a resonant mode controller exactly how they're doing it i don't know we'd have to reverse engineer it and that would require uh, ripping the whole guts out so I hope you found that uh, brief overview of LLC or resonant mode uh, converters useful. If you did, please give it a big uh, thumbs up. As always, you can discuss in the YouTube comments down below or over on the EV blog forum or even in my library comment videos, even though the, the comment system's still not that terrific on library. But anyway, oh, getting right up there on subs. Fantastic. Anyway, catch you next time.